Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Spring Boot 3 is here. Yes, it is. What else do we get from Spring Boot 3? We get the HTTP interfaces. They're quite awesome. They hide away all of the... Yeah, they actually hide away the, the, the clients. The client um, integration is just as good as we get the, a server integration. So this means that if I want to create a REST, uh, REST, REST interface like this, then I create a REST controller like this, right? And then, then I uh, yeah, then I have a request mapping, and then I have some endpoints, for, and where then I return something that will be automatically bleep generated into JSON. And now I can do the same when we want to be the client, because in, in many situations, your Spring Boot backend is kind of, uh, it's, it's usually an integration, um, yeah, usually it, it, it integrates to other systems also, and that could uh, just as well be REST, of course. It could call some other HTTP interfaces, some other endpoints, that is very, very normal. Uh, and this is where HTTP interfaces comes in. In the old days, in the good old days, you would just uh, probably just use a, um, you would probably just use the REST template like this, and then you would, um, and then you could actually call whatever you wanted to call, and you would you would have your, uh, of course, you would have your host and port that you need to call, and then you would also have your um, your endpoints. Now this has been formalized into the into the uh, into the HTTP interfaces. This is an interface that I've created myself. So uh, this application is both the server and it is also the client. So my server part is the space, is, uh, the spaceship controller right here. On my server part, I am exposing some spaceships, and that is just a hard coded list of these three spaceships right here. Uh, it has a name. It's always bird names. These spaceships, right? Hawk, Eagle, and Swan, and then Mike, Paulina, Brian are flying them, and then they have some fuel left right here. They have some destinations: Moon, Jupiter, and Mars. And if I run. If I run curl against this uh, my application, then I can do that like this. Then I will get this uh, JSON response, as you can see right here, all, or a, a list of all of these three uh, spaceships right here. Um, so, so that's quite cool. So that is my server. Nothing new and exciting about that. But what is new and exciting is this HTTP interface right here. So I can, if I create an uh, an interface and then I annotate with a HTTP exchange like this. And then I can set a URL. So this this would actually correspond to your server area, right? Or then you have a request mapping in the top with the HTTP client. Then you would have an ex a HTTP exchange, and then um, yeah, and, and then the beginning of, of the URL, uh, the beginning of the, of the endpoint where, where what is it that we are dealing with? That in this situation in space, and then you have uh, maybe HTTP exchange like this in annotation, and then you can say that the method is get. Of course, you can use all of the HTTP methods. You can use post, put, patch, option. You can use all of them, delete, etc. Right. So you can use all of your methods. You can just type it in as a string right here. But they are actually also here as um, as exchange annotations, as you can see right here. So I can also use a delete, a delete exchange. That would just be a delete. Uh, then it would be a delete post request that will be sent. Um, I have a get exchange right here, which is from Captain, and as you can as you can see right here, there are no implementation at all right here. This is just an interface that I have, so it's, it's quite awesome. I have an interface right here, and in this situation, I want to get a spaceship. I want to forget the a spaceship from uh, from a request parameter. That means that this is when I write question mark and then uh, Captain equals to uh, something like or something like that. This is the request parameter, so. Uh, that is that part of the URL after the question mark. So this means that I can actually query. It's also called the query, the query string, actually. So this is a um, so I can I can I can have a request parameter like this, and then I can just add it like that. And this uh, the implementation that will be created will make sure that um, that this is the endpoint right here, and we will actually have the question mark afterwards, and the um, and then we will have a captain. And then that will be equal to whatever we put um, we put into this uh, into, into this parameter right here, right? So that and that is um, the implementation does that for us. So it is awesome, awesome, awesome. It cannot be said enough. I have another get exchange right here that uses the path variable. So that means that here we are actually getting a spaceship from the destination from where it's going to, and then I say destination right here with in curly brackets, just like in your uh, server uh, implementation right here. Just like here, here I have the. I can almost copy paste my server implementation to the interface, and then just change it to get exchange instead of mapping. So all the places that it says mapping, then then I will just change that to exchange. 
uh, in this situation right here, I have a front destination and then I have a path variable with the name uh, destination right here. And then I'm filtering out my spaceship and then I'll find the first one that matches the um, the destination. So that, that is how the server works. Let us go back to the client. And again, you can see this pair path variable right here. It is exactly the same. Uh, you see the path variable right there and also the quest uh, param. If I go look at my uh, controller right here, let's just see. Then those are the si same as the, the, yeah, they are exactly the same. They come from this package right here, the web bind annotation, and they come from the web bind um, annotation right here. So quite awesome. I can almost copy paste this to the client. Um, but is that it? No, we have to do something else also. We have to configure this. We have to create this as a bean, this client right here. And that is what I do in the client configuration right here. So you you always have to create this uh, annoying piece of code right here. And it's, it is a bit, it is a bit annoying. It's a bit tedious, and um, it is the same. If you have multiple web clients, then of course you have to mention. Then you have to create the uh, bean for each of these clients right here. That can be a little bit annoying, but it's uh, also some code that can just be copy pasted quite easily. Uh, but I have the add configuration right here, so Spring Boot will look into this uh, class right here. Then I have the add bean right here. This means it will create a spaceship client. So this means it will, it will it will create an implementation of my interface, because spaceship client is an interface. It's not a class. It's an interface, and you can name this method, of course, what you what you want to, the, whatever you want. And I don't need this exception right here. Then you need to use the web client right here. You need to use the web client here. And this is where you actually set your, your base URL, your base URL. And this is what you, of course, you would place in some configuration, uh, somewhere you you place it in your properties files, maybe in, in a, a environment variable. Um, and the, the important part here is that we hide away the base URL in this um, in, 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 in this class right here, and we uh, we hide it, hide it away in some configuration because we do not want to think about it when we are using uh, when we're using uh, the spaceship client. We do not need to. We don't want to think about where we are actually calling out. Uh, we just want to use whatever we get uh, back, and we want to use that just like it was a regular code in our own project, right? So um, that, that 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 is what we want, and that is exactly what it delivers. This HTTP interface right here uh, it is it is really awesome then you need to call this one right here http service proxy factory and yes it is ugly and it's annoying that we have to do that but that's just how it is and then you need to return factory create client and then the spaceship uh, again this is the interface uh, right here create client and then it creates a client for um yeah for for, for, the, for the spaceship so how do we use this now it is so easy to use because here I have created another controller. Here I'm simulating that I'm another application. So this is my other application that then uses the one to use the, the spaceship uh, REST controller. And this other application can be reached by um, with, on the request mapping for slash other. This means on the, on the, yeah, on the, uh, on the endpoint slash other and then try stuff. So if I call other try stuff, then I end up in this code right here. And here pretend that I am an, another application. I want to call my uh, spaceship application right where I can get my spaceships. And what am I what, what am I doing right here? I am injecting the spaceship client. So I have the required Arcs constructor, and then I have the private final spaceship client, um, and and uh, right here. And this means that this will automatically be constructor injected because I have this Lombok annotation right here required Arcs constructor. This means a constructor will be automatically created in the precompiler phase by Lombok. Uh, so a constructor will be automatically be created with this um, with this uh, with this parameter right here, basic client, and it means that I will actually get this injected automatically. I do not need to think about this. This is a cool thing about Spring. This is the cool thing about HTTP interfaces. Then I have a map. I'm returning a map because I just like to return something, right? So we have uh, this map right here with the result. And what do I call? I, uh, I then put in a key named ships right here, and then I call uh, all the ships, and then I'm calling to string on whatever I get returned right here. And um, yeah, the return value, of course, is a list of spaceships. I get one spaceship left back, and then I get an optional of a spaceship back, and that is because this should this could or this should actually also be an optional. It can actually be null. So um, yeah, it should actually be an optional. 
uh, this one right, right, right here. There might not be a spaceship with that uh, caption uh, right there. And uh, I would definitely not recommend you to use optionals in your communication, actually, in your JSON communication. Um, and, and the fault is, of course, on the server side. You see, uh, uh, I, would, I, would never, I would never return an optional like this. I would make a nice wrapper that then would say that there are no spaceships um, that actually match that um, yeah the criteria that we that we put right here but that's another story now i just did it because it was faster to to write so yes and then i have the map i continue with my map i say from captain right here and then i have my client where i call from captain and then i just add mike right here as an argument and then I add the Mars as a destination for the last call. Where I, again, I call my um, I call my spaceship endpoint, and then I return that right here. So what we are going to do is we are going to call um, just for fun to begin with. We are going to call all of these endpoints with curl just for fun, and then after that we are going to call try stuff because this is actually where we have all of our uh, spaceship uh, HTTP interface uh, code, right? So. So let us do that. Um, I have already started up the application. It is running right there. Yes, it is running right there. And I have created an package.json file. I really like, I, you probably know by now that I like these package.json files because when I'm making demonstrations and instead of typing uh, curl localhost 8080 spaceships and then maybe I misspelled something on the uh, yeah uh, on the way then I can just press play right here so it's actually it's a package just JSON file even though that it's actually a Spring Boot application that I'm creating I just use the scripts part right here so I don't have to type stuff in the terminal uh, here now I get the list back of the three spaceships I get the the um, the eagle I get the hawk and I get the swan back. So that's that's quite cool. Let us also try the from captain endpoint again. Here I'm curling. I curl localhost eighty eighty space from captain, and then I set the captain to Mike. Set the captain to Mike. So let, let us try to see that one. And again, now I just got one spaceship uh, returned, and that was the Mike spaceship. Let's try the same with destination. And this time it is the path variable. It's part of the. It's part of the path um, that we want to look for Mars and again I just get the I get the right spaceship uh, back with the destination equal to Mars quite cool just for fun let us see how an optional look if I if I if I want to return something from destination blah blah which does not exist then I should get a null returned and yeah, I get it right there it's a string it's not JSON that is why I would definitely not recommend you to to, to create rest uh, implementations like that I would always have a wrapper and in that wrapper then I would have of course, zero spaceships return, but there will also be a small message, or uh, yeah, it will also be a code. Then, then, then no spaceships was found with this uh, with this uh, request uh, parameter right here or argument. Sorry. Um, okay, so enough about that. Now let us try the HTTP interface, and I will try that by calling try stuff right here. So try stuff is actually just to trigger that code that we have uh, regarding our uh, HTTP interface, and right here we have. Yes, here's our map. Oh, of course, I press the delete button. Let me just break. Yeah, so here we have the map. So I have a map uh, with ships right here. And here I have the list of all of my spaceships. Then I have the from destination key, which is right here. And here I have my optional. Again, this is uh, the to string representation of whatever I got returned from my HTTP client. Then I have from captain right here. Spaceship, again, this is a to string representation of the Hawk spaceship right there. Awesome. It it it's simple, but it is awesome. This means that no more. Um, this means that you have a structure. If you if you follow this, then instead of using the usual REST template approach, then this means that you not you don't have to think about uh, where should you place the base URL, how should you split it up, uh, and all that. There's already a structure for that, right? We have the configuration right here, and here you would probably uh, place this information in your property file. Fine, then it's hidden there. And then you would have your spaceship client right here where you only have to think about the endpoint, the endpoint and the yeah, which arguments that should be used. And then when you, you then when you call, then when you use your HTTP client, then it's so simple. Look, it's one liners right here, right? So it, it means it means that you don't have to think about your your, your HTTP client structure in every project, um, which is usually the case when you use the REST template approach. Um, another thing, the way that I created this project right here, you have to see that because you have to. Um, there are some things that you need in order in order for this to to work. 
you need the reactive whip. I can I can spoil that. So first of all, I I chose um, I chose uh, JDK seventeen uh, and all, and use, I'm using the Gravium um, and I'm using Gradle uh, tonight. It's it it yeah, it differs a bit which which one I use. Um, then I ticked off Lombok. I also ticked off Dev Tools, but I'm actually not running in the de uh, development um, modes. Um, the Dev Tools can actually help you, so you don't have to restart your application every time you change some code. Um, yeah. Then I added the web Spring Web right here, and also added, I had to add the Spring Web Reactive right here, the Spring Reactive Web, because um, because the web clients that we use in, in the, the client configuration um, it comes from the Reactive uh, package, so we have to add that. And then I then I added some I also added some data, but we're not using that, so that doesn't matter. So that is actually what I what I have in this project. As usual, I'll place this on my GitHub account, so you can just download it and, and try it out for yourself. Um, what was I want to show you that I got the that we need the reactive uh, web web reactive right here. You can see here the these three yeah these two classes right here. They are from the web reactive uh, uh, module. So here we have the web client and the web client adapter. Um, yeah. So that is actually it. That is that is what I wanted to show you. This code, yeah, it's a little bit annoying. It's a little bit boring. But copy paste that part, and then the interesting code is of course the interface right here. This is very 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 interesting right here. And as you can see, let me just try to show something else. Control P right here. Here we can see we have the method. We have the URL. Uh, and also we can also choose what uh, what kind of yeah, what we want to accept. So there are actually uh, yeah there are some more more handles if if we want to to do that. Of course there are some things that we um, which are much better with the rest um, with the rest. Yeah, we also have the content type for what we are. If we are sending something, then it's um, let us try that actually. Let's, let us try the post. Let us try the post exchange right here. Um, creates maybe we want to create a spaceship like this. Create ship. So maybe we have a situation like this. Of course, then what we would do right here is that then we would have a request body, request body like this. So this would be the body that we need to send, and then here we would have a spaceship, and then we could actually send that spaceship to. Um, yeah, to 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 the server. So that is actually also possible. So that's quite awesome. It is really really cool. Um, yes, that's actually it. Uh, again, thank you very much for all of your comments. Thank you very much, and uh, have a hope to see you again soon. Have a great evening. Bye bye.